Good morning. Welcome to Bible study. Have you ever tried to be the very best at something? What does it feel like to know that you're the best? What does it feel like when you know you're not the best, that other people are better at you than something? especially something you're good at. Now think about being with your class at school. It's time to line up to go outside and play. Where do you like to be in the line? Do you like to be at the front of the line? Do you like to be in the middle? Do you like to be in the back? You know one thing I see a lot when we line up at church? A lot of us like to be in the front of the line. There's something special about being at the front of the line. There's something that feels special about being the best at something. And that's what our Bible story is about today. Some of Jesus' friends we're arguing over who was the best. And Jesus talked to them about what that meant. But I have two stories for you today. The first story will be the story from the Bible um, when Jesus was talking to his friends. And the second story is a story that's very similar, but it's not from the Bible. It's a story of something that could happen to any of us. A story that could happen today. It's a retelling of the story to help us imagine maybe how Jesus's friends felt. So first, let's read today's Bible story. It comes from the book of Mark. True Greatness, Mark 9, 33 through 37. Jesus and his disciples walked to Capernaum when they got there, Jesus asked, What were you arguing about on the way? The disciples got very quiet. They had been arguing about which one of them was the most important. Jesus sat down and said, Whoever wants to be the first must be the last of all and the servant of everyone. Then Jesus picked up a little child Holding the child in his arms, he told the disciples, Whoever welcomes a child welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes God, who sent me. I wonder, I wonder what Jesus' friends said to each other when they were arguing over who was best. I wonder why Jesus said we should be last instead of first, and what he meant when he said that. What do you wonder? Like I said, there are two stories today. There's a retelling of the story with new characters, but the same point that helps us think about what it would be like and imagine some of the feelings that Jesus' friends may have felt. So listen and imagine yourself into this story. This story is about a team and the team has just finished the game. And as they're walking back to the bus, the coach hears a couple of people from the team arguing in the back of the group. When they got to the bus, the coach stopped these kids who were arguing and said, Hey, I heard you all arguing back there. What was that about? The kids became quiet. They had been arguing about who was the best player on their team. 
and they disagreed about who should have become the MVP, the most valuable player. The coach sighed and gathered them around her, and she said, look, it's not about who scores the most goals or even who gets MVP. It's about working together as a team. It's about supporting each other so that we can all stand tall and be proud of what we've done at the end of the game. One of the kids that she was talking to who had been arguing, his sister helped with the team too. And the coach pointed to his sister who was loading equipment at the back of the bus. And the coach said, look at Stephanie. She arrives early and stays late. She makes sure that all of the water bottles are cleaned and filled and the balls are put away. Without her, this team would be a total mess. And she does all of that knowing that she will never be the MVP. Now, let's get on the bus so we can go for ice cream. And maybe we should let Stephanie go to the front of the line. Do you see how this story is similar? Some kids arguing about who was best and who was most important. And their leader, their coach, talking to them about what really mattered. Working together caring for each other, serving each other, even when you didn't get any credit. Stephanie was a part of the team, but she never played in the game, so she couldn't ever score points or get special awards or recognitions for her accomplishments. But she was dedicated and she helped her team to succeed and do well. Jesus wants us to care for all people and to serve people and not just think about ourselves and how special we are or what we deserve, but wants us to care for all people so that all people have things that they need. Now, a lot of the story that we read in the Bible was about being best but there was another important part, and a part I don't want you to miss. At the end of the story, Jesus brought a child close to him and said, Whoever welcomes a child welcomes me. We see many times in the Gospels how much Jesus values children. There are many places you may go where you don't feel best or most important or maybe very valuable or like you matter at all. But at church and with God, you are so important and you matter so much. Jesus cares for you very, very much and wanted all people to know how important that children are to Jesus. You are important to Jesus too. And so as we wrap up our time together this morning, let's make something to help us remember this. If you don't already have it, I need you to get a few supplies. I need you to get a piece of paper, some scissors, and something to color or write with. If you need to pause this video to go get those things, please do that now. Do you have your supplies? Great. The first thing we're going to do is take our paper and fold it in half. And then, you've probably done this before, we are going to cut a heart out of our paper. If it helps you to draw a line, a pattern, you can do that where you would draw a line that goes up 
and then down to the corner or you can just cut it. I'm going to try to just cut it and hope that mine works okay. So the top is the curved part and then it's going to go at an angle down to the bottom point. And let's open it up and see what it looks like. I have my heart. Do you have yours? First, I want you to write something on the heart. I want you to write, God loves me. I'm going to do that on mine while you do that on yours. God, G O D, loves, L O V E S, me, M. I'm going to add an exclamation point because that is good news. Now, in the empty space, and mine's on the bottom and yours may be someplace else, wherever you have space, I want you to draw a picture of yourself or write your name. So let's do that now. I'm going to draw a picture of myself. I drew my head drawing my eyes, and my nose, and my mouth. Now I'm adding hair. How are you drawing yourself? Are you drawing your full body or just your head? And I also am going to write my name. So mine says, God loves me. And there's my picture and it says, Miss Amy. So I want you to work on this and you can color and decorate it however you want. Make it beautiful, make it make you smile and make you feel happy. And I want you to put it someplace where you'll see it and it can remind you that God loves you very much. And not because you're the best at something, not because you're the first in line or the last in line. God loves you just because you are you and you are special. Thank you for joining us for Bible study today. I'll see you again next week.